students are making mistakes. And that is totally fine. When you make a mistake and you see where you actually went wrong, you are learning and improving yourself. Sometimes, however, certain mistakes are quite persistent until the final exam. And that is, of course, not what we want. In linear algebra exams, we often have questions about linear systems. So we, as teachers, encounter a few misconceptions quite often. In this video, I will discuss a few of those errors. So when the exam is there for you, I hope you will not make these mistakes. So, the first one. Here, we have an augmented matrix. Row reduction has already been done. And then we see the system has infinitely many solutions because of the row with zeros. The row with zeros over here. Well, a row with zeros means 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2 equals 0. So 0 equals 0. It doesn't tell you anything. I could add over here 10 rows with only zeros, and I would still have the same uh, solution set. So a row of zeros by itself, that doesn't mean anything. So this argument is incorrect. How many solutions does the system have? Well, we have no inconsistencies. We also have two variables, two equations, so no free variables. So in fact, the system has only one solution. Well, what solution? You can see it. 0, x1 plus 1 times x2 equals 2. So x2 equals 2. And from the first row, you can deduce that x1 equals minus 1. So in fact, here you have only one solution. So be careful. Next one. Another augmented matrix. And then we see the argument, the system is inconsistent because of the second row. And then we get really, really sad. We have a homogeneous system. It can never be inconsistent. The second row means 0 times x1 plus 0 times x2 plus 1 times x3 equals 0. So x3 equals 0. It's totally fine. So. I understand why, why students sometimes think it is inconsistent. Because if you would interchange the 1 and the 0, if you would have 0, 0, 0, 1, okay, in that case the system would be inconsistent. But that's not the case here. So be careful. Be f you, uh, you really ha need to be pre precise here. So that's the second mistake which we often encounter, that the 1 and the 0 over here are somehow interchanged in the head of a shoot student. So then the next part. It's not so much about a mistake, but about possible choices you can make for this system. We have three variables, and you might wonder which variables can we choose free and which can we choose to be not free. Well, you know that you can choose the variables without a privet free. And the question is, is that the only possible choice? So let's take a look. Well, option A, x2 does not have a pivot, so we can take x2 to be free. That's always fine, because if we continue to solve the system, second row will give us x3 equals 0, first row will give us x1 plus x2 equals 0, so x1 equals minus x2, and if we put it in the parametric factor form, we get x1, x2, x3 equals x2 times minus 1, 1, 0. So that's okay, totally fine. You might wonder, what if we would try to choose one of the other variables free? Because, okay, we have three unknowns and two equations, so, and it's consistent, so I will have one free variable. x2 is free, will work. Will one of the other options also work? Can I choose a variable with a pivot as free variable? The answer is, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Here you need to be careful if you want to choose a variable without a pivot to be a free variable. Option B, let's take x1 first. If we would take x1 to be free, we get from the second row again x3 equals 0. From the first row we get x1 plus x2 equals 0, so x2 equals minus x1. Put it in parametric factor form, and here we have a solution of our system. And the solutions look different at first sight. But remember, the 
x2 is a free variable. You can take any number you want. Same holds for the x1 in the second case. You can take any number you want. The factors only differ by a minus sign, so we can absorb this minus sign over here in the free variable in front of the factor. So in fact, those solutions are the same. So in this case, x2 is free. Always works in this because it's a variable without a pivot, and the variable x1, which has a pivot, happens to work as well in this case. Now let's look at the last one. Can we choose x3 to be free? Well, from this second row, we also get x3 equals 0. And then the first row would give us x1 plus x2 equals 0. But x3 is free, and x3 equals 0. We cannot have both at once. So that means that this choice, in this case, is not possible. So, to summarize this problem, which variables can we choose free? Well, the ones without the privilege can be chosen free, that will work. If you want, for some reason, to choose a variable which has a pivot to be a free variable, this may work or may not work. You have to work your way all through the total solution to see whether it works or not. So, it may be possible, but be careful over there.